Oh my god. Somebody go check Togame's post for told you might just kill that. Oh G why did he kick him like that? Sometimes we seem to disagree. Pray that you protect her and that grieves my sympathy. I'm a mini you one day I'll have a mini me. I'm your son, I shouldn't treat you like an enemy. I get annoyed when you point out all my family. So I'm not fully caught up on Tokyo Avengers at the moment, but I can confidently say I've seen more than enough to really know what that show is about, and I definitely like it. I like the I like the concept. The story is pretty good, the plot itself is really interesting, and it has more than enough ignorance and violence for me to enjoy a laugh at. One Burger gives off that same vibe, but I wouldn't say it's the exact same show. One Burger got his own little lane and bag, and it's really cool that they can do that with how similar the concepts are. It took me a little while to start this hoe, but one day, Mom and Matthew was like, fuck it, I'm gonna start One Burger, so I was just like, fuck it. <laughs> I watched too, I guess. Since I'll spend the time making this video about it, I think you could tell that I like it, so let's chop it up about it. <laughs> Gee, I thought these niggas were like actually going to school. These niggas pulled up to this school and, and took over this hoe like Christopher Columbus did America or some shit. <laughs> Fuck. Why this nigga Umimia up there gardening, G? <laughs> <laughs> these niggas really got like a whole theater just to watch people get their ass beats. Brother, what is law enforcement? <laughs> I, I know folks did not say, get rid of that. I know, I know he didn't. <laughs> Fuck, this nigga Choji fell asleep during Sewell's fight, Fuck, You know how embarrassing that is, folks? You getting your ass beat so much that your top dog fell asleep while you was fighting because you was getting beat the fuck up. Nah, that kick was crazy. Oh my god. I'm not gonna lie, sacrifice was funny as hell, fuck. Oh, 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 I'm not gonna oh, lie. Oh, if your first move in the, in the fight is a spear, I Bro, think I might be cool with you. <laughs> <laughs> you get the fuck on some Wazangi for your fat ass, boy. Hulk Hogan ass nigga. I'm not gonna lie, bro. The way that all these niggas have different fighting styles is fire. I love how much variety is in each one of these fights. It's a pretty big contrast in fighting style in the matchups, bro. This shit is too fire. Oh my god, that car will kick is nasty, G. Ooh, ooh. I know that clog in that chest made that nigga hard hitter spin move for sure. The weight of the hits in this show adds so much to this shit, in my opinion. Like, it. I know Fire Force got some head sounds on it, foe, but you don't you don't want to get hit by anything getting thrown in this show at all. This uh, Togami and Choji backstory is actually super interesting. I really love how they peeled back Togami's character as this fight went on. We got hella character development for folks in just two episodes, G. Like, think about how crazy it is. Two episodes. At first glance, with how hard he was enforcing the you lose, you leave rule, you wouldn't expect that he actually believed in that shit. But the reveal is kind of smooth, folks. He did this in order to kind of save Choji, and I think that's super well written and executed extremely well here. Oh my god, somebody go check Togame's post, folks. Choji might just kill that nigga, folks. G, why did he kick him like that? Gang, the fight choreography for this Umemiya versus Choji fight is absolutely disgusting. This nigga Choji fight like, fight like Rey Mysterio with a Beyblade fetish. This nigga Choji fighting like El Fuerte. This nigga Choji fighting like, uh, Tajiri or Tajari from, from WWE, folks. Hey, I know I said these hits really have impact, but nah, this nigga Umemi is throwing Mack trucks with each cockback, boy. Good lord. Nigga throwing in rim three activators, boy, because these, these definitely putting the regular nigga like me to sleep. Thousand percent. I really like watching this nigga Choji's Descent to Madness. It was kind of hard to watch, but man, it's, it's a really effective way to do the storyteller here. It was pretty hard to watch, though, I'm not gonna lie. Seeing the flashbacks of his past self and how he's had past couples with Mimia, he should have lost it, was fire. All the imagery in this fight was phenomenal, too, like the menacing shot of Umemia, the falling through the glass visual, and a little part about him trying to piece his ideal future together, them running up a color book style mountain and finding the treasure, realizing there was nothing in there, symbolizing his 
journey to the top g like oh my god bro these are all really amazing visual elements these visual aspects go above and beyond with like aiding the current narrative and and the message this shit is so fire and it was cool to see him come back to earth too and not to be a complete psychopath anymore and actually have like this emotional breakthrough and be able to talk to Sogama and tell him what's, what's been on his mind and shit. I like how this fight ended. And <laughs> why is these niggas having a mukbang after beating the shit out of each other? <laughs> this is why niggas' friendships be lasting so long because we can do shit like this. This whole little mama was cool though because you really get the best of both worlds. These niggas beat the snot out of each other like delinquents and then they were able to cool, kick it, and talk shit out like a dose. So it's like really cool. I also like uh Umemi and making Sakura make the decision. And I like how like Umemi kind of enlightened and showed you on how it really should be when you're at the top in your like respective gang and how he wasn't necessarily aiming for the top. It just kind of happened. After they left, after Sakura and them left and Umemi and them left, it was kind of nice to see moving forward that Choji wants to change the way his gang is and change the way it's ran. But I'm gonna lie, for a first arc, bro, this is really good, gang. The wire now for this show is really well paced. It's nice to see that this show has the ability to slow down and take a step back from all the fighting and really allow us characters to really shine and progress them. We literally had 10 episodes and they've introduced us to everyone clearly, conveyed a bunch of conflicts and progressed the characters to reach a solution to those problems while giving us these phenomenal ass battles and emotional breakthrough scenes. They did a lot within the 10 episodes when, in this one arc. In the next few episodes, we also got to meet a couple more people from their class with uh, Niraki and Sugera. I think that's how you pronounce them. Niggas seeing them three fight together was so fire. Nigga, that German suplex was so disgusting. Gee, I'm not gonna lie. After I seen that nigga get German suplex, I would've ran, I would've ran away because you just slammed the chromosome into my nigga, folk. German suplex this nigga right into an LD desk, folk. Like, this shit is crazy. Meeting Kaji in a couple of the second years was cool too. All of this was just really furthering Sakura's character development and shit. He's really not used to having this kind of companionship. So it's cool to see him have some kind of support system that really gets him as a person, even though he don't really get himself as a person, you feel me? Side note. This whole grade captain sequence is super cool to me too because it's showing Sakura what it really means to be a leader and all those experiences he will have as a grade captain will really mold him into his purpose and really teach him how to be like a regular person because he still don't know how to do that. And they show his progression so well to these like little actions that, that may seem very minuscule. Like him addressing Nire and Suro by name. This show is filled with like cool little ass moments like this and this shit like this be putting a smile on my face. So I'm all for it. I'm all for moments like this. I love the setup for the next arc too. Kyo gotta be a problem, cause the way they beat the shit out that Arzai nigga boy, I feel like this is not gonna be nothing like with Choji's game. These kill niggas actually seem evil and irredeemable. So I wanna see how this pushes the characters we love into some real black Air Force shit, cause I feel like that's, that's what it's gonna have to come to. Arzai's friend Nagato was in a pretty horrible situation, and knowing how Sakura and the rest of the cast are, I know they aren't gonna let Arzai show to this all by himself. So they're setting up for another gang war, meaning more hands, and meaning more chances for character development. Man, I'm definitely here for it. It's funny, as I was writing this, they literally showed the entirety of class one sitting on the staircase saying they were down. And it ended with them walking through the schoolyard and the rest of the school sees them leaving, bro. This ending was so fire. Let's run through a few of the characters because there's a lot of cool ones to talk about here. I think Sakura is a really good main character. The show didn't really go too into detail about like his past, but they made sure one thing they got across was the fact that he was rejected and he was alone in his past and up until this point and he believes that he won't be accepted anywhere because of it and he's destined to be alone which is why he don't want to lean on anyone or get close to anyone because he feels like he know how this shit is gonna end, which is or was a pretty relatable perspective for a lot of niggas, me included. But in Makoshi, he finds a place where he finally feels like he actually belongs and he don't really know how to react, which is super understandable. Going from being completely locked off to trying to accept people, again, isn't an easy task, even if they do genuinely care for you. When you're used to being like hard harder for a long time, that's something you gotta unlearn. It ain't easy. Trust me, I know, nigga. They do a good job at changing his perspective on power and what being number one actually means, which is pretty cool too. They even show him an example of what his pursuit to the top spot could potentially look like with Choji, which is a pretty effective way to get him to open his eyes. Sakura still has a lot to learn. Still super excited to see the person he'll become after even more interactions, even though he's, I think he's already pretty cool in my opinion. Suo is pretty cool too. 
He seems very gentle, but that nigga can still fight, bro. He can lock in if he wants to. We see him be super composed damn near this whole time, so you only wonder how scary folks could be if he actually lost it. He's a super fun and dependable nigga, though, but very calm at the same time. It's kind of odd to hear that from the same nigga that voices Mahito, but it's a really nice switch up. I like how much he understands Sakura without him having to say anything, too. He's a really cool nigga to have in your corner. Nire is basically Takamichi, but like not the main character. It's funny how like Tokyo Avengers this show can actually feel it sometimes. The first time we met Umemiya, I was like, this nigga gives me real Gojo vibes for some reason. He's unserious and funny, but folks definitely know how to lock in. And turns out, after a little bit of research, this nigga is Gojo. It's the same voice actor. So it checks out. Kiryu seemed like he was going to be an asshole at first. He actually turned out to be a pretty cool dude, though. I didn't expect him to support Sakura as much as he does. So his character was a pretty pleasant surprise. And I'm, I'm hoping we get to learn more about him over time. Tachibana is really cool. She be giving Sakura the best advice. And anytime that Sakura is in like a mental slump or he's stuck mentally, he always going back to something that Tachibana or Umemiya says to progress on to handle that situation. So she's obviously a good influence on his life. So Gaime and Choji are really cool too. They both had way more character depth than I thought they would in the whole show. And they just really cool niggas, folks. These are two characters that I hope aren't just like a one-time thing. I hope we get to see them in their new improved gang sometime in the near future. Maybe they can help with Kill. Who knows? But overall, I'm super impressed with what Wimbrooker gave us with season one. It's really a perfect balance of ignorance and character development and it seems like i'm gonna get more of that in the kill arc so i'm excited for what's next for show but that's all from me gang as always i hope y'all have a great day man love y'all man peace